Hello everyone, my name is JT Master Jedi, and welcome to what would be my first actual collection video that I've ever done. Uh, I, I've done unboxing videos in the past and shown my little things I get here and there every once in a while, but I've never actually done like an actual collection video. Now today I'm not going to be showing everything in my collection, but uh, I am just going to be focusing on uh, one particular thing, and it's something that I've been collecting a lot of recently because I'm just now really really getting back into it and it would be retro games and uh, now a lot of people you know especially my age grew up with a lot of games you know Super Nintendo N64 uh, PlayStation 1 you know all those systems like that a lot of us grew up playing systems uh, and it just like molded into what was a large part of our childhood back then and for me, it was a really, really, really big part of my childhood because I have been gaming ever since before I could even remember. Uh, it started off, I was at my uh, my grandmother's house and she had a Super Nintendo over there and I used to, every time I went over there, I would always play it and that's, it just blew up from there. I played a whole bunch of old games on that system. Uh, so Super Mario RPG, uh, I played a little bit of Illusion of Gaia, um, a whole bunch of other games, uh, the Pac-Man game on there, there's all kinds of stuff. I, I, I played the shit out of that system so much, it's probably why it eventually died, but... <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to be showing a lot of the retro games I've been getting. Some of them are games that I actually got from my, grandpa my uh, grandparents' house, uh, that still have survived through the years, surprisingly. And uh, others are going to be games that have actually picked up uh, recently, and m most of them are games I have picked up recently within the past, you know, year or two. Uh, first off, uh, I'll probably go with the uh, the Super Nintendo games, where I started off. Uh, I've actually got a stack of them over here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the games, but other games I'm just going to let a little quick flash through. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any complete inbox Super Nintendo games. I would absolutely love to have that, but I don't have any right now. But Still show the cartridges, still a cool thing in the collection, can still play them. Let's see here, first up in this stack we've got, ooh, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Now everyone I'm sure has heard of this game and have most likely played it, uh, especially if around my age or, or older. Uh, this, this was one of my biggest loves on the Super Nintendo right here, was playing this game. And uh, I just had a blast playing through it. I never, I never beat it when I was a kid. That was something that was a little bit, you know, when you're like four or five, you, you, you have a little harder time beating some games. Uh, but I did eventually get around to beating this game uh, throughout the years. It's a really, really awesome part of the collection and something that's really cherished in my childhood right there. It's my first entry in the Zelda franchise I ever played, so it's definitely a, a really big part to me. And this game is actually interesting right here. Uh, this one my brother actually found at my grandparents' house. I never even knew my grandmother had this. I don't remember playing it. I I swear, I saw every game in her collection, in my uh, grandmother's collection, and never saw this. Mega Man X on Super Nintendo. He just found it in one of the rooms, just thrown with a whole bunch of crap. I was like, where the fuck did you find this? <laughs> But yeah, Mega Man X, the very first one in the series. Unfortunately, she didn't have any of the other ones. But really awesome game. Definitely something to add to collection. It's not as expensive as X2 and X3. X3 is like exponentially high. So good luck getting on that one. Uh, I might get it eventually to add to the collection, but uh, that's way down the road right there for me. And uh, next up, uh, this one I actually got not too long ago. Uh, Donkey Kong Country to uh, Diddy Kong's Quest. Now this one I played a good bit of. I don't remember if I actually beat this one or not, uh, but I did play a lot of all three of the Donkey Kong countries on Super Nintendo back in the day. I know I, I beat one for sure. I remember that one easily. Uh, I didn't play a, as much of two, but I think I beat it at one point. I'm going to have to play through it again. Just the just to make sure that I actually have completed the game. And uh, this is another one that's been a really big part of my childhood right here. And it's Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Now, even more memorable to me is Star Fox 64 on the N64. 
Unfortunately, my copy I cannot find. I need to get another copy for it. I do have it on the 3DS. Of course, yeah, they did stuff to that version. Uh, but in the N64 version, the biggest memorable part about that one is that it was the first game I ever beat. Period. I was about maybe almost five years old, maybe later in the age of four, and I actually beat the game the first time, and it was the first game I ever beat, and it was a huge moment for me. Even my parents remember that day when I beat it. Really, really big part of my childhood right there. That's, you know, when you beat your first game, you're ecstatic. You're like, you, you just flip out. Like, I, I remember when I first beat it, I, my eyes just like, lit up and I would, had the biggest freaking grin on my face. It, it was an awesome moment and I, I definitely will remember that for the rest of my life. But uh, we got those, I got another stack of them over here. Sorry, I'm having to, I got a little limited room so I'm gonna put shit all over the place here. Here's an awesome game that uh, was hard as hell to beat when you're a kid. It was Street Fighter 2. I used to remember, I got to uh, God damn it. Uh, what, what's, what's his name? <laughs> Bison. Bison. I got to the Battle of Bison. I I kept failing over and over and over when I was a kid. And I, I played it again not too long ago. And uh, I, I didn't have that much trouble beating him. And in fact, I had more difficulty fighting... Uh, uh, was it Sagat? Sagat? I don't know how you pronounce his name. The one that spans the shit out of the same moves all the time. Yeah, I had a hard time like beating that guy, but uh, uh, I just never beat that as a kid. But I finally got around to beating it uh, about a year or two ago, and it's a really awesome moment. Uh, now this one is a huge, huge part because it's one of my absolute favorite Super Nintendo games ever, and it would be Super Mario RPG. Uh, this was the first RPG I ever played, and it was my absolute, one of my absolute favorite RPGs, period. Uh, I, I love the shit out of this game. If you've never, ever played this game, definitely try it out. Uh, Wii U Virtual Console actually just got this on there. So if you got a Wii U, uh, I would definitely, without a doubt, try it out. Or if you actually want to hunt down the Super Nintendo copy, it would cost you a little bit more, but it's not way too high up in price. And definitely a really good game to add to the collection. Uh, speaking of another good game to add to collection, Super Metroid. This game was freaking amazing, and everyone should definitely try this out. If, if you ever want to get into the Metroid series, definitely pick this game up and try it out. You will love it. Uh, got two more games here for the Super Nintendo. Uh, of course gotta have this in the collection Super Mario World one of the best platformers ever created it's definitely a really huge part of my childhood as well I I played through this game I, I can't tell you how many times and it's it, it's just so much love right there with that title and then another little arcade game that I used to actually like playing as a kid for some reason because uh, it's actually pretty awesome and it was Killer Instinct I always thought the announcer had the coolest freaking voice in this game and uh, game got kind of hard in later parts. Uh, definitely need to get around to playing that again at one point. But that's all the Super Nintendo games that we got here. And now we're going to move on to, of course, the N64 games. And I've actually got two little stacks here of them. I'm going to set this one down right here. Uh, first off, I'm going to show one of my favorite games from the console, of course, Banjo-Kazooie. There we go. It's a bit light keep shining on this sucker. Banjo Kazooie is an amazing game from Rare, and if you've never played the series, you're definitely missing out. Uh, it's such an amazing game. Great platformer, little puzzle solver, had little, little mini games to play, and everything. Like everything in the game was just so great. Had an awesome soundtrack. It had lots of comedy in it. Uh, same company that made uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and uh, of course that one was a lot more mature. And if you never played Conker's, definitely try that out. And that's actually one game I need to add to the collection. It's a little, it's kind of high dollar, but it's definitely something that is worth putting in the collection. And I will do that eventually at one point. 
But there's that, and of course, it's sequel, Banjo Tooie. There we go. Equally as awesome right there. Moving on into the collection, we've got Jet Force Gemini, another rare game, which is, in my opinion, is very underrated. Like, not a lot of people actually remember Jet Force Gemini, and it, it kind of saddens me because the game was actually pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, it had pretty cool combat and music and everything. It was, like, it was, you know, it was a solid rare game. You know, rare made pretty good games all the way through the N64 age and, you know, Super Nintendo age and everything. And uh, this is just one of those games that a lot of people just forgot about, really. Uh, another game, of course, every N64 collection has to have this in their collection. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, this was actually the first Zelda game that I beat. Well, the first one I played, but the first one I beat. Uh, definitely awesome game to put into the collection. I don't know if mine... Uh, there apparently were two versions of this game. There was an edited version and an unedited version. And uh, the edited version took out a little bit of the blood and um, I believe it took out the Muslim chanting that was in the Fire Temple. Uh, but the unedited version uh, kept the stuff in. I'm not sure what mine is. I'd have to check it again. Uh, this is the second copy that I've owned and I haven't actually played all the way through on this copy. Uh, but still, great game to own and it's it's so good. It's one of the best entries in the Zelda franchise in my opinion. And it's one of the most memorable to me. And I had lots and lots of fun playing through this. And of course, another one to add. Majora's Mask. This game actually took me a long time to get around to beating, but it's excellent, excellent game. Has every bit the greatness that Ocarina of Time had. Improved upon a couple of things in there, and the, the ability with the mask that you have just added a lot of extra cool gameplay to it. It's definitely something you guys should definitely play if you haven't played before. I know a lot of people actually have never even played Majora's Mask, and I'm, I'm just like, you guys are missing out on this. A lot of people are kind of, uh, I, I think one of the things about it is they're kind of, uh, it, it, the time restriction on there, like they feel uncomfortable going to the game with a big time restriction on it, which I can kind of understand that, but, you know, there's ways to play with the game that kind of, you know, help go against that. And it's not too bad uh, once you get used to it. I actually always thought it was a really cool feature in the game that gave you a little bit more challenge. Because, of course, Zelda games are usually pretty easy for the most part, uh, barring, you know, some of the really old uh, title games. Uh, two more games to throw out here. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Now... Some people's opinions on this game is a little mixed. Me, I, I personally loved the game back in the day. I used to love playing, uh, you know, the Hoth level, and uh, I actually used to like playing uh, some of the uh, space missions. Like, the final space mission, with that fucking music in the background, and just the combat and everything, it was fucking amazing back in the day. It was so good. It felt so epic. I loved it. Uh, game was pretty hard for some areas of it. Uh, it's very, very, very unrelenting on the difficulty for it, especially play on the highest difficulty, which, <laughs> good luck on that. But uh, another game, last one for it, and this great entry uh, on the console, and it'd be Donkey Kong 64. Uh, another great Donkey Kong game that usually Donkey Kong games are usually pretty solid for almost all their titles, aside uh, maybe from one or two, but uh, it's definitely an awesome entry into it, and plus it's got the, uh, the the Donkey Kong rap at the beginning of it, which is so freaking memorable. You've got to hear it if you've never heard it before. But that's all the N64 games we've got, and I'm going to be moving on finish up the cartridges. I've got a few Game Boy Advance games, not many of them, but might as well just go ahead and show them off. And here, uh, this one I actually just picked up the other day, and it would be, if I could show it, Mega Man Battle Network 2. Uh, this one, this one, is, it was pretty cheap price. I got it for about half what it goes for, 
and you know, it usually goes for around like 20 or something like that. And I hear the Battle Network games are actually pretty good, uh, especially the uh, second one. The second one's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't played it just yet. I just picked it up recently. Uh, something I definitely want to try out uh, down the road. And of course, this one, I, I've never actually beaten this game. I've gone towards the end multiple times, and it pisses me off every time that I never actually get to finish it. And I plan to do this eventually on this copy of the game, and that'd be Breath of Fire 2. I love Breath of Fire series uh, 2. I played the most of. I've got four, and I actually just bought three uh, off of eBay uh, for, for a pretty good price. Uh, so I just put it up, and uh, that's going to be arriving in the mail sometime uh, later this week, probably Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. But it's definitely an awesome awesome game. Uh, the Game Boy Advance copy is actually the better version as compared to the Super Nintendo copy uh, because I think this one had extra features in it and uh, just improved on several different aspects in the game. Uh, another awesome game, uh, I remember playing this a long time ago and I managed to find another copy at a local game store and it would be uh, uh, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. I remember this one I have beaten the game and I remember going through it a long, long, long time ago. Uh, but I had almost forgotten about it and I was thinking about it the other day, I was like, gosh, what is that Kirby game that, you know, I was going, you know, thinking of all the stuff that was in it and then I saw this at a store I was like, holy shit, that's it. I remember it just from the cartridge itself. But yeah, that's an awesome game to add to the collection if you really want to get into a Kirby game. I would definitely try that one out if you got a Game Boy Advance or some way to play a Game Boy Advance or even emulators, you know, if you want to go that route. Uh, another awesome, awesome game, one of my absolute favorite Game Boy Advance games right here, and it'd be Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku 2. I really, really wish they would continue making Dragon Ball Z games like this one right here. I don't know why, like, they went with Bo Boo's Fury, which, I mean, granted, Boo's Fury was good. Boo's Fury was good, not as good as Legacy of Goku 2. Legacy of Goku 1, it was decent, but uh, it definitely got way improved with the second entry. And uh, I just really, really wish they would make more games like these, because they were just so amazing. Great RPG games to play and uh, definitely try them out if you never have. You know, you got all you know, you got like the Xenoverse and the Tenkaichi games and all that. They're always arcade fighters usually, or you know, some other kind of beat em up or whatever. But these legit RPG experiences, definitely try them out if you never have. But that's all my Game Boy Advance games. Like I said, I didn't have many. I just wanted to show off those few that I did have so far. Uh, I've got more I'm going to be getting eventually, but that's all I've got so far. Uh, next up, we are going to go into my PlayStation 1 collection, which I've got a couple of games in this, and uh, some of them are some definitely awesome copies, and it actually contains probably one of the rarest games in my collection, and it's actually going to be the first one that I show off here. Uh, so all righty and of course first up rarest game I have for PlayStation 1 and possibly my entire collection here and that would be Klonoa D Door to Phantom Isle uh, this one I actually had to pay a really pretty penny for uh, the game is almost like perfect condition uh, disc has like not a scratch on it it's I, I just love the what how well taken care of this game was and uh, I had to pay a hundred dollars for it which is probably not as bad as it usually goes for because I've actually seen copies go for 130 and 140 sometimes on eBay so not as bad as it could have been uh, in pretty condition Definitely a pretty good pickup right there. And uh, I've started playing it, and it's a pretty good platformer game. I really need to get through the rest of it. Uh, that, that game I just bought not too long back, like a few months ago. I've just got so many games that I've been trying to uh, get 
through that uh, I haven't gotten to put too much time invested into it. But it's pretty good so far from what I've tried. And here uh, we've actually got some games that I just got recently. Uh, here's one of them, Brave Fencer Musashi. Which I just got this in the mail today, actually. Uh, speaking on that matter, uh, I actually got a huge deal on a bunch of games. Uh, and a lot of them are in this, well actually all of them are in this video. Uh, this is one of them, and the next game is one. Uh, I got about 11 games on PS2 and PS1. Probably about $300 worth of games, and this one guy, he, uh, he wanted to make a deal with me, and he sold them to me for like a hundred and twenty dollars as awesome deal like everything was complete in box like great fantastic condition uh, I mean it, he took very good care of the games and it's just awesome to for him to actually have done that for me you know having to pay nowhere near as much for the games and ha being able to add them to my collection uh, to help you know get everything going up and I definitely thank him for that and uh, that's one right there for it. The next one is the first Sweet Coden game, which actually is in a little uh, plastic sealed case, which is cool. I kind of want to get some of these for some of my games. Uh, it's like a resealable case. And uh, I actually have some of these on uh, my Japanese import CDs that I get. Uh, definitely if you want to protect like the jewel cases and all that from getting all scratched up, but that's a pretty cool thing to add. Although it gets a little... You know, it may, it may make it look a little ugly to your eyes because some of the plastic sticking out everywhere. But it's a good way to protect stuff. It also protects it from any water damage as well, if that could possibly happen. But yeah, first Sweet Coden game. I don't have the second one yet, unfortunately. I do plan to add that to the collection, though. And here we go. We got Vagrant Story right here, which I just picked that up recently uh, from a local game store. I haven't played it yet, but I hear really good things about it. Definitely want to try it out. And of course, Zenit Gears, awesome Squaresoft game as well. And uh, a lot of people, this is actually, I've got almost all the Zeno games in my collection, uh, except for Xenosaga Episode 2. That's the only one I need to get, and then I'll have all of them. <clears throat> but, uh, First entry into the series right here, and it's an amazing game. Definitely should try it out if you never have. And uh, going along with the Breath of Fire games, like I mentioned earlier, I got Breath of Fire 4 right here, and like I said, 3 is coming later. And uh, if you've never played the old Breath of Fire games, I would definitely try it out. At least the first four games in the series, everything after that, usually you can figure about it. <laughs> But yeah, that is all my PS1 games that I have. So awesome, awesome stuff in this collection. And definitely some a few high dollar ones in here as well. Going into the Dreamcast collection here now, which the Dreamcast, I've never I never actually got to play the Dreamcast growing up. I never had a Dreamcast. I never knew anyone that had a Dreamcast. And so I never really got the opportunity to be able to play one, <clears throat> but I picked one up uh, a few months back and I started collecting a couple of games for it. And I love the console so far. It's definitely got some awesome games on it. Uh, first one to show in here is probably one of the best versions of this game, and it would be Resident Evil 2. This is probably actually the best looking visually version of this game, uh, especially if you play it uh, using uh, certain cables for it. Uh, just picked this, I picked this up from Retro Store as well. Uh, I've never actually played Resident Evil 2 before. Don't kill me. <laughs> but uh, I'm definitely going to play it on my Dreamcast with that copy right there. I got it for a pretty good deal. So it's definitely an awesome buy. The only downside is it is missing the back part. But it has it has the front and the manual and all that. All it's missing is the back artwork. Uh, here we got one game. I haven't played this yet, but it's supposed it's made from uh, the same guy that is creating Star Citizen and it's Star Lancer. It's also the same guy that created the Wing Commander games. So if you like the Wing Commander games and you're interested in Star Citizen 
and you wanted to see any other games that uh, Chris Roberts himself had created, I would definitely try Star Lancer out. It's an awesome little um, <coughs> dogfighting uh, space game. And uh, it's probably one of the better of the Dreamcast games to go out for. And here we've got one game, Machin X, which is pretty cool because uh, one of the artists that works on the Shin Megami games actually uh, did the character designs and some of the art and all for this game. So it's definitely an awesome uh, game to try out. It's kind of like a sort of a, sort of a beat em up, hack em slash ish kind of game. It's like a little action adventure kind of game. It's really weird and interesting, but uh, definitely a cool little thing to try out if you've never, if you want an interesting game. It's not, it's not too expensive either. You can get a copy of it for probably about 15 bucks or so. So not too expensive at all. And here we've got Fantasy Star Online, uh, and this one is actually version two, which has more content added onto the disc. And uh, it actually is possible to play online with uh, Fantasy Star on the Dreamcast. There are uh, fan uh, servers that are being ran that you can actually still play online with all the features and everything. I, I got to look into doing, seeing how you can do that. I don't know if I'd be able to do it with my kind of setup that I have. You might have to have something very specific to be able to do it, but uh, definitely something awesome to uh, try to do later in the future. And uh, before I show this last one, another awesome little game on the console. It was the only console that had this original version on it and the Sonic Adventure. Now there was the Sonic Adventure DX, which is the director's cut version, which is supposed to fix some of the issues that were on the original copy, but they didn't really fix it. Yeah, it, 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 I, I, they made a game to fix problems, and they didn't fix the problems. Yeah, how oh, Sonic Team, you never cease to amaze me with the failures. <laughs> But yeah, it's still an awesome game, and Sonic Adventure 2, you know, definitely one of the most memorable Sonic games out there. Most people all will recognize Sonic Adventure 2 uh, for all the uh, memories it brings them. And uh, many people will keep on asking for Sonic Adventure 3, which will probably never happen. So don't ever look forward to that, guys. <laughs> don't get your hopes up. And probably one of the absolute best games on the Dreamcast, and one of the greatest games, period, and there's going, there is a second game, and there's soon going to be a third game in this series, so it'll be a whole trilogy, and that would be Shenmue. I started playing this recently, it's pretty interesting so far, I haven't gotten very far into it yet, but definitely for its time, the visuals are amazing, the voice acting is kind of funny, but not too terribly horrible, you know, from the time that it came out. It's not the worst, really. And, uh, like I said, just visually and storytelling and everything, it's an amazing game. And definitely an, um, a great thing to add to the collection if you never have played this before. But that is all my Dreamcast games right there. And actually, I forgot to show these two. I am sorry because... I said I didn't have any box copies for Super Nintendo, and I completely forgot I do have a box copy for Super Nintendo. And that would be da -da -da -da, Illusion of Gaia. Illusion of Gaia is a great RPG game. Uh, it's very, it's it's a great gem that's fairly unknown to a lot of people. It's probably one of the best RPGs on the Super Nintendo, and not a lot of people know about it, which is kind of saddening really but uh it's the same company made games like uh terranigma which was unfortunately exclusive to japan and the uk regions and uh they made uh <coughs> what was it the act razor game i believe and uh, uh they made several other games and it's definitely an awesome game to pick up if you never have i managed to get this box copy uh not too terribly long back and this great thing to add to collection. Mine's almost complete. I think it's missing <clears throat> one little... I think it's just missing the manual, that, and that's it, my copy. And uh, this was a boss copy for the N64, 
and one of my absolute favorite N64 games, period, and I have so many memories playing this over and over, and that would be Star Wars Rogue Squadron on N64. And I, I just I just will say this is probably one of my top Star Wars games I've ever played, period. And never played the Rogue Squadron game, you need to try them out. They are amazing entries, especially uh, Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube. Definitely try those out if you never have. And speaking of which, we are moving right along into the GameCube games, and oh, what is this? We got Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2, right here. And like I said, probably the best in the, fr in the franchise, although I probably have the best memories with the N64 version because that was the one that played the most. But still, great game to add to the collection, and it's an amazing experience if you've never played them before. And here we've got Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Just got uh, <clears throat> Django Fett on the front there, which uh, I got this for a pretty good deal. And it's still got the little collector's card on the inside, which is pretty awesome. And... Before I forget, I have also got Rogue Squadron 3. So yes, there were three games in the series, and I found out not too long back that they were actually supposed to release remastered versions of these on the Wii for the whole trilogy. But unfortunately, that didn't happen because of many issues, and I guess it will never will. And it got complete. They, they completely did the Wii version remaster, but because of company issues and everything, it will never be released, unfortunately. Which is very sad. Apparently, there are some existing copies of the game, but it's only uh, owned by some of the development team. Uh, next up game is an amazing game to add to the collection if you're really looking to collecting for the GameCube, and it'd be Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. And uh, I've never, I actually have only played a little bit of this game. I don't want to get too much into it right now because I'm actually trying to finish um, the first Paper Mario game on my Wii U because uh, they have it on the virtual console. I'm trying to finish it before I actually get into this one. And uh, I, I'm told by many people that this is one of the absolute best Mario games. Uh, probably second only to uh, Super Mario RPG. And next up we got another, this one's a pretty rare gem for the console and is actually looked at, uh, is sought after by many people uh, who are fans of the franchise and it'd be Pokemon Gale of Darkness next. Uh, which we've got that dark movie on the front which is pretty awesome. And it, yeah, an actual console Le like legit Pokemon game on console, which they didn't make very many of these, and not, they didn't make very many that actually had you no know, actual combat that you could do. And usually they were just like little fun mini game stuff and whatnot. But this one had legit story mode, combat, everything with it. So uh, I really need to get around to playing this copy. I haven't played it just yet, uh, but I definitely look forward to it when I get around. And uh, another game on the console that, uh, there's a lot of mixed stuff about this game, but I definitely want to try it out. It'd be Shadow of the Hedgehog. I got this from my roommate, actually, and uh, definitely a little cool thing. I, I like Shadow of the Hedgehog. I definitely want to try this game out just to see how it is and get my own opinion on it. But uh, it's a pretty cool game, and uh, it's, it's definitely something to play if you never have before. Especially if you like the Sonic franchise. I mean, if you're a big fan of Sonic series, it's worth trying out because it's something, you know, different. It's a lot different, actually. And, uh, despite what people say about this game, I actually personally loved it. Star Fox Adventures. I don't know why this game got as much haze it did. Yeah, granted, there were a few little issues here and there about it, but... Here's one of the upsides. It was a Star Fox game that didn't take you three hours to beat. That's one thing going for it. And two, it actually had like a long story 
for the whole game, whereas usually the Star Fox games are, oh, there's the bad guys, shoot him, oh, he's a villain, get this guy, he did so and so, that's it, yeah. But Star Fox games usually weren't known for their story, just usually for the awesome, you know, combat in them. But Star Fox Adventure, you know, it had a little bit of the space combat and everything, but it had its own land, you know, on-ground adventure, uh, something they were experimenting with. Personally, I liked it. I don't know why I get so much hate. Uh, I, I definitely would recommend people to play this if you're a friend of the, fan of the franchise. And, uh... There's a little game. I haven't actually tried this one out yet, but it'd be a little interesting to get it. I got it from my roommate as well, and that would be uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And that continued, That concludes, <laughs> not continues, my uh, GameCube collection here. And uh, ne next up, we've got the PS2 games, and I've got a lot of those so far, uh, especially within such a short time, because I just picked up a PS2, like maybe a week or two ago, and I probably have more games for it than I do for all the other consoles. <laughs> oh, and uh, just to add, I actually, uh, for those Game Boy games, I don't have a Game Boy Advance, but I do have a Game Boy Player that I got from my GameCube, and I have the little uh, disc that you have to use to run the program and everything, and allows you to play the games on your TV. Some people actually don't even know that that exists, but they there actually is that thing. Uh, you can put Game Boy Advance, and I think you can put Game Boy games, like the Game Boy Color games and all that in there as well. I haven't tested those out, but I'm pretty sure you can work them on there. And... i got a couple of games up here on my shelf, actually, that I forgot to bring down. But yeah, uh, this entire stack right here, I'm going to go through first, and this was the stuff that I actually got from that guy uh, earlier today. I, like, literally just got these today. And, uh, pretty awesome titles in here overall. It's definitely one of these to add to the collection. First up is uh, Grease 5, which I love shoot 'em up games. I played the crap out of uh, Gradius on the Super Nintendo, and, uh, I haven't ever played Gradius 5, I don't I don't think. I might have played it at a friend's house or something years and years back, uh, but I don't quite remember it. It's definitely something I want to try out, because I, like I said, I absolutely love shoot 'em ups and I love the challenge, I definitely want to try this out. Ooh. Thought I was going to get away from it, did uh, Next up is uh, another game that was released by Sega, and it's Shinobi, which is a little, uh, like, action hack and slash game. Uh, I don't, I don't know too terribly much about this, but it's a very cheap game, so if you want to try it out, it's, you know, like I said, you can get like six, seven bucks. A little cheap game to add to the collection, something worth trying out. It's, it's pretty decent for when it here. Uh, next up is an absolute gem that people uh, love and I really want to get around to playing all the way through it and it is Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I've only played a little bit of this game uh, when I played the HD version but I never beat it. I, don't know, I got like a little bit into it but never actually beat it. But I'm going to actually try playing it on the original PS2 version. So definitely something to look forward to right there. And next up is actually two games that go alongside with each other and it would be Dark Cloud 1 and Dark Cloud 2 which uh, from what people tell me these are really fantastic RPG games on the PS2 you've never tried them out uh, from what people can tell me definitely do it it's it's well worth a run right here and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing it myself here and next up, we've got Suicoden 3. So yeah, we got Suicoden 1, Suicoden 3, we're only missing 2. From what people tell me, I can forget 4 and go to 5. But uh, I hear really great things about Suicoden 3. I definitely look forward to playing this one. Uh, next up is also another great game that many people tell me about. And it actually looks better than the 3DS version that's coming out later on. 
and it's Dragon Quest VIII. And, and I, I've looked at comparisons, and visually, the PS2 version looks be like leagues better than the 3DS version coming out. Uh, I don't know feature-wise which one would be better, but uh, here, I got this copy of it, so something to play through right there. Uh, I've actually been collecting several of the Dragon Quest games to try them out, because I've never played the series before. And I've got Dragon Quest um, 5, 7, and 9. I got 8 here. I need to get 6. Uh, I got 7 recently for a really good deal. So, uh, I actually got it from uh, Hastings. Hastings closed down. They had a uh, one of their rental copies, which still had the manual in the, co in the case for some reason. Uh, usually they don't. And I got it for like nine bucks, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah, I'll take it." Uh, these last two games also go together, and great RPG games, from what people tell me, especially uh, the the second game on the PS2, and it's probably one of the higher dollar in this collection of PS2 games that I have here, and that would be Shadow Heart series. Uh, Shell, we got Shadow Heart One. Well. Apparently there was a game right before this one, I don't even know about it, uh, but it's the first Shadow Heart game on a PS2, and then you got Shadow Heart Covenant, uh, which is the sequel to this one, comes right after it, and I hear really, really good things about this one right here. Uh, it's got very, very high ratings from what I can see, and I, I hear nothing but praise from people on it, I definitely look forward to playing it, but I gotta play the first one to get to it. A little bit of mixed things on the first one, but people still say they loved it, so I definitely look forward to trying it out. But that is all the games that I got from uh, the guy uh, in the box today, and the rest of these are games that I have picked up uh, recently, you know, past like week or so. And first off, we've got Ratchet Deadlocked, which is an awesome entry in the title, and I do not know why they didn't include it in the HD collection. I thought it was so weird they they, they didn't put it in there. Uh, but it's definitely an awesome little uh, game to try out if you never have, and it's usually pretty cheap to get a hold of. And I love the Ratchet and Clank series to death, especially the older games. Like they are some of my favorite things, and uh, I look forward to playing through this game again. And next up we've got Star Ocean Till the End of Time, which uh, I've never played this entry in the series, but people tell me great things about it, so I definitely look forward to playing it. Uh, next we've got Valkyrie Profile 2, which I need to get a hold of Valkyrie Profile 1. This apparently is a prequel to uh, the first game. Yeah, try not to get that confused with it. I put 2 on this. But, uh... I started playing this, and it looks great on the PS2. I mean, you know, for a PS2 game, it looks fantastic, especially when you're using S-Video cables. Uh, it makes it look amazing. And uh, next up, we've got Xenosaga 1, which I picked that up uh, about a week ago, and Xenosaga 3, which I literally just got this a few days ago. Uh, from a local game store. Uh, did a little trade-in and I got this copy. So now all I need is episode 2 and I'll have the entire Zeno series. And that should conclude our retro game collection here. And of course, you know, I've got the consoles for all these, of course. Uh, I'm not going to show them because all of them are kind of like wired up right now. And they're just like everywhere. And uh, one of them I don't even have in this room. It's in a completely different room in the house. Uh, but yeah, it's my retro game collection so far. Uh, personally, I think it's a great start uh, for everything. And uh, a lot of these games, like if you're looking into starting up a retro gaming collection, a lot of these titles are definitely ones to look out for. Uh, other PS2 games to look out for are like you know like the Dot Hack series. And uh, a couple other titles. Uh, my personal opinion, also, uh, Monster Rancher 4 is one. That's another game I'm looking forward to getting. And uh, there's lots and lots and lots of games to really try out. Like the Atelier Iris and everything. Uh, just loads and loads of games were on the PS2. There's so many good ones out there. 
And Game GameCube, Dreamcast, all, all of them, the, all these consoles have such great games on there. And it's just, it really saddens me that uh, a lot of people will never ever play these games. And I, aside from you know possibly using emulators, which you know sometimes those don't quite work quite right. Uh, you know, you usually get little problems, lag, and everything like that. Especially if Peter can't handle it. But uh, it just saddens me really that a lot of people never play games like these. Because I mean, I grew up playing a lot of games like these, or playing some of these particular games. And they just molded me into, you know, the gamer enthusiast that I am. And I can't believe I got rid of some of the games in the past, and I'm so stupid at doing that. So there's several of them that I still haven't gotten a hold of again. Uh, some I had to sell because I was really strapped for cash at one point. Uh, including uh, one of my personal favorites, I got rid of uh, Demon's Crest. Which people will probably hound the shit out of me for getting rid of that game. But like I said, at that time I was I was like financially strapped. Like I, I had like no money, empty wallets, everything, and uh, I really want to get a hold of that game eventually again. Uh, hopefully one day I will. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. I know it was a little kind of drown drone out video, <laughs> a lot, lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But I just wanted to show off some of the stuff in my collection. Uh, eventually I'm going to get to showing some of my other stuff in the collection, possibly, like some of my anime and whatnot. I'd have to make that a lot shorter though because I've got way more of that than I do with games. Uh, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, help support the channel. Like, we, I know we don't get a lot of content out lately. I really want to get to making more content for you guys. Uh, I'm just trying to figure what I really want to do with a lot of the stuff. But uh, but again, thank you so, guys so very much for watching. And if you got any recommendations for games, uh, just shoot a comment down below. And I will definitely try them out as best I can whenever I can get around to them. And uh, maybe I can be able to add them to the collection as well. And as always, I will see you later. Bye-bye.